Hey everyone! Thanks for tuning in to You Do It. Today we're gonna start ripping this carpet off and replacing it with beautiful lemon flooring with wide stair noses. And if you're ready, I'm gonna show you how you do it. Let's go! Alright, you ready to begin? You better get one of these. It's gonna be dusty. Alright. So first, is remove the carpet. Obviously. So I'm just gonna play with it a little bit and determine what I'm dealing with here and what I wanna do. Now with this whip here being a solid piece, solid two by ten, and it's only sticking out three eighths or so. There are a couple of options. You can you can put a three eighths piece of plywood here in the back and make it straight. Or I can just go with the angle like this. Because if I do remove this, the the run, the width of this will become smaller. So I end up taking these parts off and basically shortening this distance by 3 eighths or so. If I do it like this, see? So I can shove it up against there, it's a very slight angle. Or I can do this, burn it out. Another option, you can cut it off, which I don't uh, think is a good option for this. So I'm just going to finish prepping for removing all stuff and I'm going to get rid of all these staples. And I'm going to show you how to do it quick and efficiently if you have any sozo. Because if you don't, you can scrape all that, and it's gonna take you probably <clears throat> an hour or so to do that. 
Yeah, five minutes on every step, half an hour to an hour. But with the saws, I can do it in really like five minutes, and I'll show it to you in a minute. So I'm just gonna start taking this off. I'm gonna show you. This one and two. This tool is very handy. Uh, maybe fifteen twenty dollars. I got it at Harbor Freight Tools. Loads are on Depot have similar ones. I like this one better. So it's handy in taking carpet off, taking this kind of thing off. But it's designed to remove nails. Now, I'm ready for my old friend's photo. As soon as I sweep this off, because I don't want that dust flying all over the place, obviously. I'm going to get rid of this. I'll straighten it out later. Of course, you don't want to walk on the nails. So, I'll just grab my dust pan on the room and just sweep it real quick, and then I'll show you what I do. And then, of course, check your, check your soles. You don't have any staples before you walk on a brand new nice floor, and you don't want to scratch it. So, go check them after demo. Those uh, staples are extremely sharp if they get into your sole, and you walk on this. Or you do this or something, drag your foot, a good chance it will scratch even this extremely durable finish, so you don't want to risk. So check. Alright. So obviously here I don't want to use a new blade. I'll be removing staples and all kinds of stuff. I'm just going to use an old demolition blade, which is wooden nails. I'm going to use a long one. All right, so let's see how quickly I can go through all these staples. That's how long it's gonna take you to hand scrape all these staples on every single one of them. This makes, basically makes it like 10 times faster and you don't end up sweating and hurting yourself. Let's move on. Thank you, Sozo. Okay, so we're gonna create here. Seven sixteenths. There. Seven. 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 Eight. Seven. Eight. seven. Almost half. This piece left over. I think it's gonna do two. So I need thirty-three and a half, right? Uh, yeah. Thirty-three and a half. So I need eleven. That means I need six of those. So I'm gonna set it at about an inch. You can do an inch and a half. I'll do an inch. It's enough. Just the bacon. My factory is here.
I was actually I want to tell you about this tailpiece here very important to have it here because when you rip and then you slide back this actually prevents prevents your plank to hit the saw in the back like this so you can safely just drag it without without being scared of this type of scenario when it kicks at you okay, okay now it's gonna take over Somewhere, say three and a half, somewhere here. Uh, of course, if you want your tools to last, you don't want to change the o rings in it, you don't want to hear it leaking all day long. You will put oil before every single use. That's why you don't throw away anything until you're done with the project. So this is pretty much what this is, okay? I'll put every six inches so we'll put more. I'm gonna flip. It's up to you. Of course you do want to wear earmuffs when you're in between the walls like this. I do pre-cut the whole staircase and I'll show you how I do it. You can do one at a time. Uh, when I first started with this, uh, what is it, 12, 13, 15 years ago, I was doing one at a time. Then when I got to the level where I was comfortable with it, probably after, I don't know, 5 staircases or so, maybe 10, I started pre-cutting them and then setting them in one go. And I'll show you how I do it. So I'm gonna make it shorter a little bit. 134. And I'm just gonna use the table saw. An old blade. Well, unfortunately, last night I, as I was starting to put this video together, I found out that I'm missing a clip where I show you how I measured these angles and do this whole layout thing. So I'm gonna show it to you on this staircase, obviously. I don't want it to be a huge spoiler. I don't want to do it on the staircase that is already done. Uh, so, as you can see, these were just cut straight and then caulked with uh, some kind of colored caulking. So these were all cut 90. And of course, walls are not. Walls are in and out. Anytime. So of course, professionals we do have a Stairmaster tool, which basically is an adjustable. You can spread it out and you can adjust these things here. Obviously, I don't expect you to have a professional tool or go buy one for $300 just to do one staircase. So I'm going to show you how I used to do it a uh, long time ago when I did not have a stair master nobody had that so of course a very important thing to know see how they're nailed here 
you can see these nails nail holes right everywhere filled but you see them and what these nails in the middle here do your staircase is never flat it's never straight it always curves down to here and curves in to here why because the stringers on the sides are attached to the walls and the middle stringers are basically hanging in the air so with time they sag which creates this unevenness here so if you shoot nails right here in the middle it pushes it in and so it becomes crooked same happens here so then you need to go and undercut this this was undercut that was undercut or you get these gaps here I do things quite differently and of course I don't find out these angles with squares so what I do is I take this measure and I go half inch shorter 42 and a half it does need to be a good good line 90 degrees actually I have to do it from this side so this is a factory edge here and I measure the width of the staircase it's about 11 and this one is 11 and a half so it's good for my purposes and then I you can use a chop saw sliding chop saw to cut it I use table saw to do it and so okay well most contractors or pretty much all of them if they don't have a stairmaster professional tool they'll use a square to check this angle or they'll use a framing square which is basically a 2 by 24 by 16 and they'll put it against this and they'll look at this angle now we see about eighth of an inch gap here and here we have about sixteenth of an inch gap here now since this is curved in this is not a true line so the true line is somewhere actually here so basically your tools if you do it like this you're resting them against a side wall that is curved in which results in an accurate inaccurate reading here that's why I do this this is basically a big framing square that I custom create for every staircase <clears throat> Because now it goes from this point to this point. See? Now it's resting against these corners. Now look here. Let me take my camera off and shove it in there. So we basically have uh, about eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch gap here. And my pencil goes in very easily. So all the way in here, all the way in here, but a gap here. All right. So this tool, this square, is supposed to be right there. So it tells me there is a gap there, but this true square tells me that this gap is 
twice more than what this guy was showing me. The other side we had we had this reading, which is sixteenth of an inch. Without it, it's not even that. It's about half. Okay. Now, of course, this one is not as bad as some of them will be. Imagine this going in quarter inch, and that's usually the case. Anywhere from eighth of an inch to quarter of an inch, sometimes even more, especially in our older homes where these middle stringers have sagged with time and so everything got bowed and so now what I do, I rest it against the back wall shove it into one of the corners I take the back measure and I make it about sixteenth of an inch shorter I don't want to fight with these walls I want my piece to just drop in basically without scratching walls, fighting it, banging on it. So 42, 42, it's a three quarter tight measure and I'm gonna make a sixteenth of an inch shorter. That's gonna be 42, 11 sixteenths. Now, all I do is I look at this line. And so I need to add maybe sixteenth of an inch there. So I just do zero on the top, plus one sixteenth on the bottom. I stick it into this corner, make sure it's up against the back, and this is almost three sixteenths of an inch here. And my speed square was telling me half of it, but this is telling me three sixteenths gap which means I have to remove this distance from here right and so I'm gonna put of course the back measure you never mess with this is your back measure so you add sixteenth of an inch there and you actually remove three sixteenths of an inch here so this piece can go all the way in. This is our measure, right? So we're gonna do minus 3 sixteenths here. And in the same fashion, I'll go over, and of course you put a number. Then you do the risers the same way. So this is your run. Then you do the riser. Well, I actually do the runs, the flat parts, all of them. Then, then I go another way <coughs> because the riser is a little bit is uh, shorter usually than the flat part, the run. So when I do the riser, I actually trim this to the proper height. So that's why. I go one way, do the runs, then trim this to the width of this riser, and I go do my risers and I put them close here. The, the measure is the same, it stays the same. You measure this, it's the same as you measure this, right? Okay, so I'm going to look at it here, of course, I'm going to measure wall to wall again it's the same 4211 so I will write 4211 of course you put numbers let's say number one number two number three and so on now this one I gotta remove eight of an inch here so I'll do minus eight of an inch and zero on top you don't have to do zeros stick it against this wall and it tells me I got to remove eight of an inch here so I'll just do minus eight of an inch and I'll move to the next I'll look at this perfect 90 
42 13 so I do 42 3 quarter let's call it it, it doesn't matter 42 3 quarter so I'll put an X mark here meaning perfect square put it up against this you can add sixteenth of I mean remove sixteenth of an inch here if you're not happy with this tiny little gap. Let's just do that minus you can do one thirty second. <laughs> Zero and move to the next. Of course make sure they don't unlock. You can actually and I do that when it becomes a problem like this. I'll just put some masking tape here so it prevents it from unlocking or duct tape. But for this purpose, I don't really care. So up against the back wall, I gotta add about eighth of an inch. So I'll do the takeoff, of course. 42. 13, so we'll do 3 quarter, on this side I'm adding 8, so plus 1 8 at the bottom, and right toward the very end, there is a little tiny gap, so you can address that or you can just clock it, it's up to you. All right, so I, get, I think you get the point, right? Now I can finish my video. And I'll actually show you how to do it without all these nails here. Without all these nail holes. I have a way of making it without damaging the finish then having to fill all these nail holes and they're distorted, you can feel them when you drive a nail, it kind of gets damaged and gets distorted some of them turn out nice, but others like there's another one it basically chips the finish off and then you have to fill it with caulking and of course it doesn't look that professional well I mean every staircase is like that when you get on your floor and then you look at it point blank and so <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how to avoid this gap here how to basically fix this stair staircase with basically glue and not putting any nails in the face of it in the surface and you ready for it? let's do it! So now I actually take a look at this I have 12 steps 24 angles right? Out of 24, only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 at 90. 5 out of 24. That's 20%, approximately. Right? 80% is off, in and out. That's why I do that. So now I'm gonna have to go back. So I'm gonna flip it. I'm not gonna measure because that's exactly the same number. But all I'm doing now is putting it down and looking at my angle. Of course, walls are in and out, so you're not gonna get this gap perfect. Never gonna get it perfect. You can try. You can cut it back like this like 22 degree or so make this edge sharp so it cuts into the drywall but it's gonna be extremely easy to damage 
I tried that too. So it's just much better to just fill this with clear silicone after I'm done. That really makes it beautiful and neat looking and almost perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna do straight cut here. I'm gonna do straight cut there. Do this. X, X. This one I'm gonna add 16 ton inch down below. So I'll do 0 0.16s. This one, that one make straight. X, straight. Ooh. That one. Let's add 316. So zero at the top. 316. Straight. Eight to the top. Eight to the top. Number eight. Yes. Eight to the bottom. Straight. Eight to the top. So here I want to find out, obviously, the width and the height. So I'm going to put this one here. Just going to measure. And so I'm going to do it five and a half. Because I don't want to allow a little clearance here. Okay. So I'll just take it out eighth of an inch or so. Okay. And then you do want to have clearance on the back. And please take of an inch. Because this part fits behind it like this. So we don't do too many nails. I like to have I always have this connection. So I have a tape of an inch, quarter inch. Quarter inch from here. This one I'm not gonna have a riser. I'm just gonna freshen it up with paint later. But this one's gonna be shorter. This one I wanna have clearance here. So five and the same here. Now these I do have to do it this way. Here. Much better. So five and three eighths or so. Five and a half or so. I basically want to find an average. Five and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half should do. Mm-hmm. Five eighths. Five eighths. Three 
of overlap that I just have to put here can't do this right just can't do flush mount on the ends on your rest of the flooring but it's supposed to move around so you just can't do that it's supposed to do this so I have to basically measure to this Seven, five, sixteenths, and of course I want to do the other side as well. Seven and five. So seven and five sixteenths. Now the stair nose is of course coming in ninety-four. And this one already cut. This little piece. I think I'm in ninety-four and change. So I basically do want to cut them in half. Okay, somewhere 47. Now, of course, you want to be careful with that because your staircase might, might be wider than this one. This one is pretty narrow. Usually, they're at uh, 42 and up. So, here, I'm just gonna chop them in half and then I'm gonna go and lay them out and mark them all and then cut them all. So first what I do is I cut them to, to the right width. Of course the same thing goes for this. You want to mix them up. Now look, it's going to be just like this behind it and another one and sometimes another one. So you, obviously you don't want them to be like this, right? Mix them up. One there, one here, this guy, this guy, this, and this. Sometimes they're all different. Sometimes they're not. Just one, two, one, two, three, back to back again. And then go back to here. Now this right here. Two, again, two, and this. And so <coughs> now they only stop. Okay. I want this male end to be preserved because the way this stair nose operates basically sl slips into the male edge okay so I need one at five 
see there's an ancient quarter that's going to be left and I'm going to use it on my uh, vertical piece, the riser. This way I don't end up wasting lots of material. My 5 inch runner is a number 12. So I'll put 12 on the back of it. Let me just do 5 and 3 quarter, number 1. Yeah, 5 and 3 quarter. 5 and 3 quarter. Put number 1 on the back of it. And then the rest, I'll set the 5 and 3 eighths, 10 of them. I'm just gonna mark 5 and 3 eighths, and I'll show you why. Later on, I'll put it on the side, on this pile, so I know. And now, I'm gonna put it here, because of this loop. You basically wanna physically align it with the proper side of your blade, without touching it with your finger, like I did, because it's not safe. I'm gonna do these two without my mask. But laminate, when you cut it, creates lots and lots of dust. And so when I pre-cut a bunch of them like this at the time, I do use earmuffs and my mask. And I'll do two of them without, and then the rest with. Seven and three eighths. Let's grab this. Before it goes, and see if we need to cut off anymore. Well, I think it's perfect. <coughs> so I'm just lucky here. These guys, whatever I just removed, works perfect. So I don't need to rip except one. The first one I want to make at 5 16th. Yeah, remember? So just one needs to be cut back. They're all the same. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I do need to make one at fifteen sixteenths and one at seven eighths. You can do the same thing. And mark it. They grab another one. If I have any scraps. Yeah, here, here's one. This one will do at uh, seven eighths. Just you know, you gotta put number one, so I know I want to put it in several places. So this is my number one at seven and five sixteenths. And here's my number eleven. these two planks here so I can stress my sternum forward. So that's number 12 and that's another one. Let's start with one. 
Okay. Right, so now I have my chart here. I have 34 and 1 16th. <clears throat> but I have my zero here, my zero here. So what do you do? I did take all the measures of the back side. So I mark it here. I mark it here. I take my tape measure. And I do 34 and 1 16th. There. Now, instead of adding 8 of an inch here, I just had a gap here. I'm gonna remove 8 of an inch on this side. So, instead, I'll mark it back eighth of an inch. Connect the lines. Here. So basically my measure is from this mark to this mark. Here is the same thing. I'm gonna do 90. I'm gonna mark it here. I'm gonna see what I have to do. I have to add <coughs> one sixteenth of an inch here. So I'm just gonna add it. Connect these lines. You know what I'm gonna do this? One. I'm just gonna go and do it on the table so really quick, but usually I just do all of them. I'll mark all of them, then I'll cut all of them. And of course, I don't want to cut my stair nose just yet. from Ukraine. Good for you, 34 and 1 16th. I think Dmitry from Ukraine wants to be on YouTube. European quality Mexican prices. <laughs> European quality Mexican prices. Call Dmitry from Ukraine, he'll paint your house. So here I have a zero and three sixteenths on the bottom. I'm just gonna put a square, put my mark here, or just add three sixteenths eyeball, or use a tape measure. Connect the lines. There it is. Move to the next. Let's see, there's a moving around. Yeah. 
you know what? This looks to be a little bit. So I'm just yeah, I'm gonna go back a little bit. Yeah. Let me go back to this. Excellent. And scratch it off and do it again. Because I don't wanna fight with them later on. So mark here. Mark here. Three sixteenths off. Square line. Keep your square where it is. Thirty-four and a quarter. And one eighth on the bottom. So thirty-four and a quarter. Sorry. Thirty-four and a quarter. Have to add one eighth of an inch. So I'm just gonna put a pencil at the angle like this, and I ball eighth of an inch or so. Score it. Mark it. Let's do a few more. More tape. I'll do from another side, and you can go like that. So zero at the top, you get one sixteenth at the bottom. Okay, let it trace it. Keep the square where it is. Hook on to it. Thirty four and a quarter straight cut. Double check things. Yes, I did move. Side, right in, sixteenth of an inch. Ooh, this side, just double. I do one now. Sorry, I did Number six, straight cut on the left. I'm just gonna do first, of course. That's, that's how I used to do it before they made this here master pool. You can buy it for like two, three hundred bucks. But if you don't need it often, you don't really want to buy it. Three, four, seven, sixteenths. I do want to kind of mark back there. Thirty-four. And seven sixteens. <coughs> mark square and subtract sixteenth of an inch. Six. Okay. I think you get the point, right? I'm gonna do the last one with you. I'm gonna do a cut. So, mark there, eighth of an inch added at the bottom. We're gonna put this pencil on the handle like this. And then I connect the lines. Thirty four even. Come back here. To add 3 sixteenths on the bottom. So I'm gonna put the pencil on the angle again and I bolt 3 sixteenths and connect the lines again. I know you got it. Some of you might not. Who knows? I'm just gonna leave them there. And I'm gonna do the flat parts before I go cut them. The same kind of uh, idea okay the risers obviously need to connect together and this is the number one and number one is also 
little square cuts, which is good. Thirty four and one sixteenth. My number one. cut on the right hand side I always start with it or you can keep factory I'm gonna keep the factory edge on this I'm just gonna do this 34 and 1 16th Three sixteen added on the bottom. So again, I bow my three sixteenths. Put a number on it. You can put a number here. If they unhook on you. fashion let's see <clears> the <throat> square cuts on both so I'm gonna line them up on either side of an inch from over there so I'm gonna mark it and then just go back a little bit sixteenth of an inch number five let's do one more film number six is all different so. Shortest is 
7 sixteenths. Thirty-three seven eighths. Thirty-four seven sixteenths. But anyway, thirty-four seven sixteenths. Then I got eight to an inch to remove on top. To remove, so I mark it. And then I go back eight to an inch. Okay. Put number six on it. Now we can do the number seven, which is taller than everybody else. I have a straight cut on the left. But here, I have this locking system that I have to remove, so I'll just line them up if I can. <laughs> Of course, I'm going to have to remove this lock. So, straight cut on the left, measure on the bottom. 34, 3 8, 34, 3 8. 8 to an inch added on the top. Number 7. Okay. Well, it's time to cut them all. I'm going to do both, but I'm not going to do the stair noses. Because if I messed up on any of these, I want to know before I cut them. So actually, the stair noses I cut as the very last, just before I set them, basically. So, after all my flat parts of the runs are in, and I confirm that they're right, I go and cut the stair noses.
everyone. It's day two on our staircase and we're ready to do some steps today. Are you ready? I'll be using this 18 gauge. Pneumatic nailer. And I'm gonna switch to one inch nails. So I begin by just setting them somewhere close to where they I'm gonna end up building. Let's see, alright, so this is six, seven, eight, six, seven, eight, maybe even here. This is three, four, five, three, four, five. So basically before I cut my noses, I want to make sure that I'm right on all these. So I'm going to put them in place and if some of them, if some of them don't work out, I just set a gap here. I'm gonna take it all apart later. I'm gonna set a gap here. So this riser fits here and behind. This way I don't need to nail here. You kind of interlock. And then I can push this one in with a hammer. But at this point I'm just checking that they all gonna work out. Oh, this one is too high. Maybe it's because this one is not all the way down. Yeah. As far as angles, we're good. A little too high on this one. Just keep setting them. Because I'm putting these all at once. Because I don't want to go back and forth, up and down the steps. Because I don't want to use too many nails. Yep, this one's good. No. A little bit tighter than I wanted. I just want them to drop like this. Okay. Uh -huh. If it doesn't fit, don't force it. I usually check on both sides. Yeah, that's too tight. Right number, yes. This one I'll have to trim. So I'll check the angle here, it's good. 
I'll check the other side. I'll see that I'm off right here. So I did it wrong right here. And so I'm gonna leave it. Go check the rest. That's how I want it to fit. Just drops in, push it in a little bit. Yeah, like this. But you don't need to use a mold. Okay, so that's number eight. I'm gonna put it on the side. I mean number seven. Yeah, this is number eight. So see this way you don't have to count them. One, two, three, four, five. You have a number here, have a number here. So it becomes like furniture from IKEA. Oh, come on. Cooperate. one of course this one is too high and you can check with low piece and I put it here what do I see I see a gap you see a gap under the pencil use longer level and that gap is gonna be even bigger so this, that's why you sharpen it like this actually. You can put it like, just like that, and trace your line from the back. It's gonna be pretty accurate. But you don't have to make, make it perfect, because we're gonna end up putting glue on this. Put in glue here, here. Okay. This one goes to the table. So this one goes here. Sometimes I just do like double every other step, so it's up to you. You can lay them down some there. Because if this is too out of 90, 
they may not stand properly. So you just have to be either careful or take them down completely. All right, now I'm gonna go and uh, play with these two. So I checked that. That side is fine. But this one, I was wrong, solid. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna check the measure here. And it's 34 and 3 eighths. And I'm gonna confirm it. 34, well it's a little longer than I wanted. So I'm gonna put it where it's going. I'm gonna align it quarter inch here, quarter inch there. And since I want it a little shorter than this, sixteenth of an inch, what I'm gonna do is put my pencil on that mark and just gonna trace it with the wall at the same angle. Okay, again, I don't know if you've seen it, I'll try to do it closer. So I marked it, 16th of an inch, and I put it here, find the right angle, and I go with the wall. It goes, it sli glides or slides against the wall. Alright, let's begin. I'm gonna start with the, these guys. Check it, yes. Good. Okay. We're ready to rock and roll, actually. Alright, so the next step is to correct these. So the number 12 was wrong. Number 12 was off a little bit, right? And the number seven. I'm just gonna <clears throat> lean it like this. Put it flush with this and I'll check. Well, this side is good. Now I'll do the same here. And this side is off a bit. Okay, so I trimmed the corner here so I don't want to actually <coughs> go by it by the 
crooked corner. And this should be good. clean cut. I get some tiny chips. Right. That's actually what I want. Tiny chips. I don't want a perfect edge because perfect edge will look awkward against that unperfect wall. And then when you cock it, it will kind of show. You'll see that perfect edge. So you don't want it perfect. You want it Slight chips, okay? Slightly. Can't be a super clean cut. So when you do laminate, don't get a new blade. Just use an old one. As long as it doesn't chip it really badly. Just slightly. And you do want to wear your muffs. Okay, so I actually put it this way first. I apply my glue on the back side of it. You can actually do the whole thing. It's up to you. I think this way it doesn't stick out. There's no mess. I do want to take this. Strike it like this. Of course. I will be double checking things before I put glue on them. I want to double check. Lay it down like this, and you will need something for the glue to drip on. This guy, I go like that, and this one doesn't require too much glue. So it's a uh, piece that's gonna stand here like this okay most people will put a bunch of nails will put drive nails here in the middle push it in so it will take the form of your existing staircase which is all bowed. 
so I don't like doing that, obviously. So since the riser sits here, I can hide a couple nails right underneath it. Okay. And so all I want to do, really, and of course you do want to check this, right? I want to make sure that it all fits properly and sit on things. So you kind of check before you nail it. Here. What I do is, of course, I have to go over a full plank and strike it like this so the glue gets transferred. Now, I'm just gonna put one nail here. Like <laughs> and before I load it, right? So you can use inch and a half. For this, I use one inch. Chances of them bending and coming out the other side are small this way. So right there, and I don't put anything here. I do put one at the angle like this. And another one at the angle right here. I don't put anything here because I don't want it to take the shape again of this old staircase that's been sagging for 80 years. Yes, I hear you. I don't care. I'm, I'm working. The reason I use subfloor liquid nails, subfloor and deck is because when you get it on your product, it's easy to remove it with just these gloves. Okay. And now, I'm not gonna put anything there. The glue will catch it. So then I'm just gonna drive one or two right in the corner somewhere. Make sure there's something to nail to. You can go high like this here and try to drive it into that like this and don't drive anything here. See the gap? You don't want to push all that stuff in there. Just want it to catch. And so I'm gonna leave this piece till the very end. I'm gonna come back after I'm done with the staircase and set this piece and the very last piece out there. So put it here, check. I'm gonna flip it. from the other side I'm doing this and I know nobody's gonna walk on them for 24 hours if you do have traffic or anticipating traffic you should definitely put more okay now here go into this strip and this I'll just do 
two strips. Wave strips. About half inch overhang. It's gonna hide my nails. So I'm just gonna put one here a little on the angle down. Like this. Make sure it's down all the way. There. And nothing here in the middle. I'm going to show you how to do without nailing through these guys because they're shiny and sleek so these holes in these surface will be showing you'll see them so instead Now I'm just gonna put glue everywhere, like this, like that, okay, so I do waves, okay. or triangles, and I do want to make sure I got glue on this piece as well, so now when I'm gonna put it in, it's gonna just glue this whole thing together and what's gonna be holding it all together is glue not those nails and I'm just gonna take it together See if I need any more. It's pretty good. Let's. I'll do another one. Just in case. Pull it. And glue it. Together. And. One more. Now. I want to make sure that it's not lifting, right? Sometimes you do have to. Just like that.
space like this especially you're gonna get it on things and yeah, it's almost like guaranteed left to do. I'm gonna go around it and that's gonna be the last thing I'm gonna do this week. Alright? If you do need to go up the staircase, obviously you wanna step here on the side, right? And you don't wanna step on a stair nose like this. You wanna step right here. So I'm gonna do that. Step on the flat part up if you need to okay so for some reason my go my GoPro camera stopped working uh, when I was actually undercutting this so I'm gonna show it to you again I basically laid a piece of scrap here right and then I just went like this okay. then I took this wall to wall measure 34 and a quarter okay so I made sure this is square and it's in decent shape it's not broken not chipped okay so I'm putting in the gap as you see and I do dots and I do white dots not one single dot like on the spot like this no you go sideways like, like this and this one this stair nose is overlap so it's extremely delicate and if it's not done right Potentially, you can break it off. So I do use lots of glue. So if you, when you put it in, all that glue, and I do nail it. These I do nail. Okay, so my riser is here. I don't want to nail it into it. I don't want a nail here, and I don't want to put my nail here. I want my nail to be right over this. This. So I flip, and I put one right here. One there. Okay, now I can let you go. And I'll do the same thing here. I do usually one in the middle as well. You can tape it. But these are very easy to ruin. 
in next 24 hours. So we're done here. Look, I barely went through one rack of these. I still have left. How did I reload? I don't think I reloaded. Well, job well done people. It's time to go have some beer and enjoy a short weekend. Of course, don't forget to put a big ass sign to let everyone know. Don't go there. clear caulking it will turn clear and it's dry So just like that. I'll do one more. I'm going to go and wash this sponge.
dries, all those gaps are going to disappear in a few hours. I'm going to see that. Okay. So I think you get the point, right? They use clear. Clear. It's white initially. But when it dries in a few hours, it will become clear. It's just easier this way to apply. Hey, what do you know? All the gaps are gone. Where did they go? Hey. Hello. Well, some of them are still dry. Like this one is still dry in there, but it's all. I mean, if you don't crawl on all four, you put your eyes in there. Looks pretty good. What do you think?